Hello and welcome. Um, I'm going to be reading through the patch 2.35 notes, which is launching today on the 19th of August 2014. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, this came to me as a surprise. I didn't even realize that this was coming out today. So apologies about that. I would have been more enthusiastic towards it if I knew. And also right now the servers are down for maintenance so this is a good chance for me to read through them so this will be a discovery for me just as anyone else watching so it says patch 2.35 brings a multitude of additions and refinements to Eorzea including new beast tribe quests, colored plumage for chocobo companions, changes to the hunt and spirit bonding and more so let's see what we can see. So they've, they've added in the Exali Beast Tribe quests. So it says, unlike previous Beast Tribe quests, players will be required to craft various items in order to progress through the story. With the addition of the Exali Beast Tribe quests, a new Beast Tribe settlement and vendor has been added to the North Shroud. The wares offered by the Exali vendor can be purchased with Exali Oak Knots, a new form of currency. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So, and given that it's crafting, it's going to be right up my street because I guess people know that I craft a lot in this game. And so it starts at, in North Shroud X24 and Y22. So I'm, as soon as the servers come back up, it'll probably be one of the first things I do. These are the quests. So in order to unlock it, you have to have first done the main scenario quest in pursuit of the past. And then these are just the names of all the quests as you go along. Okay, side quests. It says Beast Tribe side quests can be accessed after completing the following main quest. So exactly reaching for Cloud 9. In addition to normal daily quests, players can also undertake delivery quests from the Exali tribe. Three normal daily quests and one delivery quest will be available for each reputation rank every day. Um, inclusive of those issued by other Beast Tribe players can only accept a maximum of six quests per day. And again, that's good for me because I've already hit the maximum rank with all the other Beast Tribes, so I'll be able to use all of my allowances on the Exali. So daily Beast Tribe quests. The um, Ecalt 9, a group of outcast Exali, um, labor to build the airship Dazul Kulan so that they can return to Exile's lost paradise. Adventurers will be called upon to aid them by crafting the necessary components. Delivery quests. As the name suggests, delivery quests differ from normal story quests in that to complete them, players must deliver various requested items. You will earn, sorry, you will earn quota point for each item submitted during a delivery quest. Only by earning enough points will you meet your quota and complete the quest. The quota, which must be met to complete the quest, will change depending on your reputation. Please be advised that your quota will increase if your reputation raises while undertaking a delivery quest. A list of requested items can be viewed by selecting timers under duty in the main menu, which will be renewed daily at 8 a.m. Uh, PDT, which is specific time. Now, please be aware that changes to the list may render certain items undeliverable until a later time. So 8 a.m. PDT means 4 p.m. GMT UK. Uh, upon completing a delivery quest, players will be awarded experience points to the Disciple of Hand class associated with the quest item. The class is indicated via icons on the list of request items in the SCAT 9 delivery quest window of the timer's interface. A maximum of one delivery quest can be undertaken per day, Earth time. Upon either completing or abandoning a quest, you must wait until the next day before a new quest becomes available. In the event of a delivery quest is abandoned, uh, daily quest allowances will not be refunded. So this is a warning. This is basically saying do not accept the quest if you're going to abandon it because you will lose that allowance. So crafting for exactly quests. In order to craft the items required for Xali quests, players must make use of special crafting facilities. After obtaining the required materials in the course of the quest, the player must then present them to the workshop supervisor before using their crafting facilities. After preparing the work space, the supervisor will then furnish you with the exact amount of materials required for your task, and you will be granted access to the facility for a limited amount of time. If time runs out in the middle of synthesis, that attempt will be deemed a failure. 
In addition to the special crafting facilities, player must also equip a pair of FCAT wrist gloves, which can be acquired early in the course of the main quest. With the FCAT wrist gloves equipped, select the recipe designated by your quest from the Beast Tribe section under Special Recipes in your crafting log to begin synthesis. Players must also fulfill requirements before they can begin crafting the above-mentioned Beast Tribe recipe items. In the event you run out of time, your synthesis fails or the item quality is not the requested by the quest giver, speak with the workshop supervisor to receive additional materials and resume your crafting attempt. So I will be uh, making a video covering the special recipes for the Exali when I look at the Exali quests, because it, it might not just be a case of craft as normal, you might have to make special considerations for this. So it says allied beast tribe quests have been added. It says in order to undertake allied beast tribe quests, players must complete all available main quests for each beast tribe. So let's see. It's a call of the wild. So that would be an interest to me, Twin Adder. So players must complete all main quests for each beast tribe. So now this is interesting. So I wonder what these give really. Little Sils Lost. So, yep, I will take a look at these, see what these ally quests are about. Maybe they might just be slight continuations of a finished beast tribe. So anyway, treasure hunt, leather buried treasure maps now yield elemental clusters instead of shards. Well, that's cool. And then grand companies, the following has been added to the list of items requested for expert delivery missions. Okay, so weapons awarded from primal battles, 60, 70, 75, and 80. Accessories awarded from the Ultima weapon. Now, the expert delivery missions are where you can turn in random items for Grand Company seals. So they just, they've increased the scope of which items you can turn in. So, for example, I probably will turn in my item level 70 Wolfmark gear because I don't really need it. I'm going after the 90 set. And let's see, gear awarded from Labyrinth of the Ancients, rewards issued in exchange for Behemoth Horns and Odin Mantles, gear issued in exchange for Allegan Tombstones of Mythology, item level 90 gear. So I've got a retainer full of spare gear, which I might not need even for Vanity anymore, so I might be turning a lot of these in to the Grand Company Expert Delivery Missions. Coinciding with the above adjustments, the above mentioned items can now be sold to NPC vendors. So, because before, the reason I hanged on to them as well, because basically all you could do is drop them if you didn't want them. You couldn't desynth them, couldn't sell them, nothing. It was just stuck with you. So I just filled up a vendor with them. So it says, the option to undertake supply and provisioning missions is now the first option to appear in the query window when speaking to the personnel officer at your respective grand company headquarters. That might, might make it a bit easier. I don't think it really makes a difference. A confirmation window will now be displayed before leaving a free company or just start discharging a free company member. Okay, so they just added in a confirm box. That's cool. So housing. A free, free company members can now be discharged even if they have purchased private chambers or stable to Chocobo. In the event a player is discharged from a free company has purchased a private chamber, rights to said private chamber will be relinquished automatically and any furnishings held will be removed. Furthermore, any Chocobo stable by players discharged from a free company will also be removed automatically. Chocobos automatically removed from the Chocobo stables will only retain changes to their name and feather color since the last time they were stabled. Any experience gained through training since they were last since they well since the last time that's a typo they were stable will be lost further details on changing chocobo feather color will be outlined below okay so this is kind of mean though to be honest it's like if you have spent 300,000 gil and filled up a private chamber with furniture and your free company can just kick you out just like that then um it's it's risky make sure that you're in a free company that that will not happen in 
Uh, when discharged from a free company, any furnishings held within private chambers will be entrusted to a residential caretaker NPC. However, certain furnishings cannot be restored once they have been placed in an estate or private chambers. To retrieve items placed within private chambers, players must speak to the residential caretaker within 35 Earth days. Failure to do so will result in the loss of any furniture entrusted to the NPC. Now, what they mean by this is that some furnitures, when you place them, cannot be retrieved once placed which means that once you place it in your room that's it it's gone and but they are clearly indicated so you sort of even from now you use those at your own risk so what this is saying is that the residential caretaker npc will hold any other furnishings which do not have that restriction if you were to be kicked out of your free company and will hold it for 35 days earth time until unless you pick them up otherwise you'll lose them so it says remaining time to reclaim furnishings can be confirmed by selecting timers located in the duty main window. So you see here, estate possession retrieval. So it's kind of almost like a, a slap in the face, though, to be honest. That you, uh, it will, at least you can get your items back. But at the same time, it's like you know you were told to get out, and this this is the timer you have left to get your stuff back. So Chocobo is automatically removed from an estate's Chocobo stable will be entered to the housing enthusiast NPC. Okay, so obviously you're not going to lose your Chocobo. The option to purchase private chambers will now appear at the bottom of the query window when accessing the interface to move to private chambers. The following items can now be grown via gardening. The, well, these are the names. I really, really hope that these are not what required to recolor your chocobo because that would be kind of annoying because then these are going to be worth millions of gil but whatever the appearance of plants for the following seeds have been changed okay onion prince oh, okay so these are all the pet seeds you know because you can grow certain pets i've actually picked up three of them but i still need two of them so they're just saying that the appearance is different so maybe it'll be more indicated that you're, you're growing pets so it says players can now feed stabled chocobo snacks. So the option feed my chocobo has been added to the chocobo stable interface under 10 to my chocobo. By selecting this option, the player can feed the chocobo any of the fruits. Okay, so these are the new okay, so oh, so these are the new ones that they've added in. So they're just snacks for the chocobo. Once fed, the chocobo's plumage will change in six hours. So depend on the fruit yeah okay so exactly like i said so you're gonna have to these are the the plants you will need to grow and these are the i'm guessing the different colors so we will see what each of these colors is and it says the chocolate plumage will change color depending on the fruit it was fed after the chocolate plumage change colors feeding it a hand lemon will restore their plumage to their original yellow hue. Unlike other fruits, the chocobo plumage will change immediately upon inspecting the chocobo stable a second time. Okay, so let's see. The hand lemon. Okay, so feeding a hand lemon basically resets your chocobo to yellow and all of these change it color. No change will occur if chocobos are removed from the stables prematurely. It is recommended to feed them during times when the chocobo can be left stabled for extended periods, such as prior to logging out for the day. It's basically just saying just feed it before you go to bed or something. Um, the chocobo stable interface has been adjusted as follows. The option to rename my chocobo has been added. The players can now use subcommands to view details of other free company members' chocobos. In the event a chocobo can no longer receive experience from training, its rank will now appear in orange, which will be true in my case. A star will now appear next to the chocobo's rank in the companion interface for every rank gained past the initial level cap. This change will make it easier to discern when a chocobo has reached the rank cap. A Skywalker NPC is now available in every major region. Okay, so it says by speaking with the Skywatcher, he or she will inform you of the current weather conditions for all regions, as well as forecasts for the next 8, 16, and 24 hours. Skywatcher NPCs can be found at the following locations. Well, that's awesome. So they're pretty much next to the main Aetherites of 
each town. So what that means is, is that when you're doing the sightseeing log or you're doing big fishing or you're doing anything in the game that requires a certain weather in a certain zone, you can talk to the Skywalker NPCs and just check if they're coming up rather than having to constantly go there to check yourself. And they even have it in Camp Dragonhead, okay? And in Revenant's Toll. So this, this is a very welcome change. So I think there's going to be a lot of people who are fishers or um, who are or pullers I should I should say officially and people doing the sightseeing log which will be very very happy with this change so this is to make those things easier as, as far as I can see so it says the following edition has of the Xali settlement graphics for the locations below have been adjusted as follows the entrance near Etkat in the North Shroud has been adjusted the gates in Nataland at Kuyorfa's Central Highlands now open allowing players to enter okay because before when you would go to these different places these different gates around the game they were just locked so they're saying that they're now open because the Exali tribe is in the game so regular marked bills have been adjusted as follows regular marked bills that awarded one allied seal will now award four allied seals upon completion which is awesome which because those ones tend to just be the go here and kill like four mobs so that will give you four rather than one so regular mark bills that awarded two ally seals will now award 10 upon completion which are usually the ones which are fates that which are the last two of the date of the regular mark bills elite mark bills as well as b rank elite marks have been adjusted as follows respawn time of rank b elite marks have been changed to five seconds wow really so it says the HP of rank B alike marks have been reduced so that they can be defeated by a single player. So rank B ranks are going to be spamming, you know, people are going to spam them all day. In conjunction with the above HP reduction and the minimum contribution required to complete, alike mark builds has been lowered. Rank B alike marks have been changed from aggressive to passive. Rank B alike marks will no longer yield rewards upon defeat. Upon defeating a rank B of light marks, players will only receive the reward granted by the light mark bill in their possession. So they're basically saying that B ranks will only help you if you're using your light mark bill. They are not going to be good for anything else. In conjunction with the above change, the number of allied seals awarded from a light mark bill has been increased from 20 to 50 seals. So they're really encouraging you you do the light mark bills because they have basically been ignored before so it says all players will now be assigned a different weekly elite mark so okay so it's not going to be like a thousand players trying to kill one mark all the time they're going to be random so new items are available from the hunt bill master oh cool so all the the seeds that you need for the different colors they can just be bought for 15 allied seals so that people can't exploit that market i'm sure at the beginning people are going to buy them for 15 seals and throw them on the market board for like a million gil but then people should realize and read patch notes and realize, oh, you can just buy them for 15 seals. So don't don't be fooled. Do not be conned with these items. And action and traits have been adjusted as follows. Melee DPS, Fear, Fetter Ward. Okay. So these are just changes to certain... Let's see, enhanced fetter ward, recast time reduction enhancement has been changed from 120 to 90 seconds. So, if you're interested in these class changes, then I guess just read through for your classes. Glory slash, axe kick, somersault. I don't even. Let's see, okay, blast shot. Oh, these are like PvP, I think. A lot of these are PvP. So the range has been reduced from 25 yards to 5 yards for blast shot. So that means the knockback shot, you have to be within 5 yards to actually use it rather than using it from far away. That's fair enough. So I think these some of these are PvP balances. A for flow. Skills such as one elm punch and glory slash can now be remove any remaining stacks of A for flow on a selected target. Yeah, so these a lot of these are PvP changes. Okay, Carter no flat, border no ruins has been adjusted as follows. To better ensure the outcome of a match is the outcome of a match is determined after the halfway point, the spawning time of interceptor nodes has been adjusted. 
Okay, so what they're basically saying is is that people tend to win the match at, when they're like halfway through the match. So um, the HP of Interceptor Drones and Interceptor Drones has been increased. Players can now use Vote Dismiss when inca incapacitated. The change will not be applied to dungeons or raids. The effect of Glamour Prisms will now be applied to gear when used in the Wolf's Den or front lines, which I think a lot of people wanted. They wanted to be able to Glamour their gear when they're doing PvP, so that's going to be welcome for a lot of people. Players can now form an alliance prior to taking undertaking Labyrinth of the Ancients or Psychos Tower. Awesome. So that means you can now officially go in as a 24-man group into these two dungeons. You don't have to just do an 8-man group and then get partied up with other people. So it says, after forming a full party, 8 players, target the leader of another full party, then select Invite to Alliance from the sub-command menu. Once invited, a not notification window will be displayed. Alliance invitations can also be sent via the player search interface, friend list, or friend company interface. Please note that the leaders of each party in the Alliance must be in the same area before registering for duty. So... And also, by the way, apologies that there isn't any sort of background Final Fantasy music or anything because I can't open the game client and I don't want to rip off some website. So it says, after inviting the first party of an alliance, a confirmation window will be displayed, allowing you to confirm the status of the alliance. Say, so registering for duty as an alliance. After meeting the following conditions, the leader of party one can register for duty on behalf of the alliance. A full alliance of 24 members, three parties of eight has been formed. The leaders of all participating parties in the same area. Okay, composition requirements are not imposed upon pre-formed alliances. Now, that's interesting. So what that means is, is that you don't necessarily have to go in with free tanks or whatever. You can just go in, if you want, you can have one tank and then a bunch of extra healers. So the duty will commence when all players have selected commence. The alliance registration will be withdrawn in the following conditions. A party leader leaves the area. A party changes leader, a party member logs out, a party member leaves the party, a party is disbanded, the council all button is pressed, a party withdraws from the alliance. So basically what it's saying is, is that unless everyone is basically standing still and then just clicks confirm, they're not getting in. And in the event the alliance registration has been withdrawn, registration for duty will be cancelled even if party members have selected commence. Okay, so new items have been added, so we can look at that in a bit. So let's see. Um, so to increase the availability of Magic Stable Brooms, the following adjustments have been made. The recipe for Magic Stable Brooms has been adjusted as follows. So it basically no longer requires glazed nuts, which will see the price reduce a lot. And also it will yield 30 of them rather than 20. So it will just be broom bushes only, not glazed nuts. So hopefully that means the price will go down. For the people who have crafted millions of these stable brooms and selling them for 35k each, tough luck, they're about to go down in price. Uh, when placed on estate grounds, the Junkmonger NPC will now sell magic stable brooms for 20,000 kill. Okay, so that almost dictates what the maximum price is. Anything above 20k and then people can just buy it from the NPC. So. They are limiting the price. I guess they weren't happy with the high price of Magic Stable Brooms. And then it said, in order to address the issue of players undertaking a duty and then equipping gear lower than the required item level for the purpose of spirit bonding, the following adjustments have been made. The rate at which gear gains spirit bonds will now be reduced when gear is not the appropriate level for a given duty or open world encounter. Aha. Uh -huh. So what, what, th what this is referring to is basically some people, especially in turn four, have been going in with like crafting gear. So they can they can desynth it, like crafting accessories as just spirit bond it quickly and turn them into material and so on. So it's basically saying don't you know, you won't get any benefit of doing that anymore. Furthermore, if the item level of gear is too high or low, it will no longer gain spirit bond. Okay. So that's interesting. So it's a way of saying that you have to spirit bond gear appropriate to your level. The too low part might be a problem because it means that if, like me, you're a 50 everything, you won't have a way of farming rank 1 and 2 materia. So the, rank, the low level materials might shoot up in price if this is true. 
So the ring will gain spirit bond at a reduced rate in duties such as Labyrinth, the Ancients, of Pharaoh, Sirius, but it will gain spirit bond at an increased rate in such, certain duties such as Catherine Meridium and Wanderer's Palace. Okay, so it's basically saying that having item level gear appropriate to the dungeon will increase the spirit bond rate compared to taking them into much higher dungeons. So the following changes to spirit bond gain, the probability of converting gear from item level area above into grade 4 material will now vary depending on item level of the gear converted. Interesting. So what they're basically saying is, is that it's no longer going to be a foregone conclusion and guarantee that item level 70 will give you grade 4. So, hmm, which is kind of sad, but whatever. You know, if, if they're going to increase the spirit gain of item level 70 gear, it might be a good thing. I guess we'll see. So it says the following items can now be dyed. So Guardian Corpse, Bomeon Boots. Okay, so I think these are, I think they are some of the items that you can buy for random event. Yeah, random event turn-ins that you just buy this gear. I think that's what this gear is. I'm not 100% sure. So I think it's I think it's to do with event gear. So so certain previously unsellable items can be, now be sold. Okay, so new amounts have been added. Ugh. I'm assuming that this is the Exali one. New minions have been added. This is definitely the Exali one. So let's let's assume that both of these, the mount and the minion are for the Exali Beast Tribe when you get to the maximum rank. So it says new achievements have titles have been added. So rank one, three, five, seven with the I mean the Ekkar 9, that's the Exali Beast Tribe. And okay, complete the quest Friends Forever, you get the title, the negotiator. So this is like when you I think, I'm assuming when you complete the story and attain the maximum rank will be the ex cult black guard and I think this one you'll only get when you've crafted enough for them okay so moving on retain adventures so retain adventures it says has been adjusted as follows the number of elemental shards obtained from retain adventures has been increased okay the rate of acquisition of a minute mind flayer from field exploration 13 has been reduced the rate of acquisition of all other items has been increased items can only be obtained by retainers who have attained a certain item level disciple war of magic or gathering rate disciples of land has been added to quick exploration okay so what it's basically saying is is that I think it's essentially saying the higher your gathering rate is or the higher your item level is the more gear you'll get um, only the notification window will be displayed when initiating vote abandon. Okay, so calculation for average wait times of the duty finder has been adjusted as followed. Player members will no longer affect calculations for average wait times. Queues for front lines will now display in the average wait time for your affiliated grand company. Okay, new emotes. I think this is going to be, we're going to have fun with this, that's for sure. So you can pet. As you can see here, putting your hand on another player's head, um, hand over, which is the same that you see all the time during like main scenario cutscenes. So you can do the hand over emote. Certain emotes have been adjusted as follows: your character's height in relation to that of your target will now be used to determine how the emote is executed when used to interact with other targets. As of patch 2.35, the poke, pet, and hand over emotes have been affected by this change. Okay, so it's basically just saying for poke, pet, and handover. If you, for example, are rogued in and you've effect, you selected and you're going to poke a Lollafell, then hopefully it will actually poke downwards rather than into the middle of the sky. So it says, please note, however, that the emote adjustments will not be made when sitting, mounted, or when no target selected. Okay. So it says new phrases have been added to auto translate dictionary. Okay, cool. So, docks, ferry docks, airship landing, maelstrom command, adder's nest, hall of flames, residential district, entry counter, hunt board, sky watcher, weather report. I seem to have misplaced my keyboard. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'm guessing this is more related to like PlayStation players. Resolved issues. 
So now it is a good idea to read this just to see maybe you might not have even knew about these. So it says an issue wherein an incorrect grade of glamour prism is required for item level 70 gear obtained from the hunt. An issue in the Cotton of Flats Borderland Ruins wherein players could attack targets without retaliation at the Helodrome. An issue wherein PvP action Axe Kick did not grant the effect of Grease Lightning free. An issue in the second core Bahamut turn 4 or aka turn 9 wherein under certain conditions the boss did not use certain actions properly. An issue in the Labyrinth of the Ancients wherein under certain conditions Enmity did not display properly when fighting certain bosses. An issue where in certain conditions leadership of a free company or link shell could be passed to a deleted player. Okay, that was kind of bad, so I guess it's good they fixed that. An issue wherein under certain conditions a seller could place elemental shards on the market in quantities larger that than could be purchased through normal means. An issue wherein under certain conditions a seller could place elemental shards on the market in uh, sorry, uh, an issue where in certain conditions the player's private chamber were not removed properly after said character was deleted. An issue where in cutscenes did not play properly during the seasonal quest Burgeoning Dread. An issue where in under certain conditions party members could not receive the effects of Protect when cast after the entire party had been incapacitated and revived. An issue wherein Beast Rider reputation did not display properly. An issue wherein under certain conditions the spawn rate of face was unusually low. So known issues. Okay. So it says an issue wherein when the Exali Beast Rider buffs facility access specialization and facility access specialization two are active, the error message that appears when additional actions cannot be used is incorrect. Okay. So I guess it's basically saying ignore the error message. An issue wherein incorrect log message is displayed when a retainer levels from 49 to 50 from quick exploration. The correct log message will be displayed for su subsequent ventures with the level 50 retainer. Okay, fair enough. So new items. Okay, so these are the new items that they've added in for the, I guess a lot of them are exactly the Beast Tribe. So they have outdoor furnishings. These are the hand quests that you must you must wear these, for example, if you want to do the special recipes with Exali, as we read above. Um, out the furnishings, okay. Miscellanery, carved piece of oak used as currency. Okay, so this is a currency. Um, a bit of fruit. Okay, and these are the... What you need to change the color of your chocobos. So this is the X tap plot apple will change the chocobo feathers to red. <laughs> Let's see, a strong, I guess a deep red. The Doman plum will make it a light red. The Mamok pear will make it a deep green. The Val fruit will make it a light green. The Ogamora berries will make it a deep blue. The Salad Lates pineapple will make it a light blue. The hand lemon will restore it to its original color. Okay, these are all the seeds that you can get your hand on to obviously grow all of these items. And then direwolf whistle, a polished bone horn used to summon an exali trained direwolf. Yeah, so that's just to confirm that the ugly looking wolf we saw above is the reward for hitting the maximum rank with the exali beast tribes. The wind up violet. It says, touched by a prime uncorrupted to the core, yet adorable nonetheless. Use item to acquire Wind Up Violet Minion. Okay. Wind Up Founder. It says, four score and many more years ago, the Amalgia founding fathers dreamed of a day when in their footsteps would walk adorable minions. That day has finally come. Use the item to acquire Wind Up Founder Minion. So we'll have to see how we can get our hands on each of these. Maybe they, they just immediately available from the beast tribes or maybe these are the rewards for finishing the what they called allied beast tribe quests for when you finish them all so these might just be an additional quest so i will look these up see if i can get my hands on them so it says materials require the craft components for an airship bladder envelope Okay, so these are basically all of the components for the airship. So essentially, you're going to be helping the Exali build an airship so they can go home. 
which is pretty cool which I think will probably be like a precursor to building an airship for your own free company so this will be like a test of that and the special facilities as well because I believe when I remember some of the previous live letters that they were talking about having special facilities in the basement so you could build a, an airship so this must be the practice of doing that to get people used to the idea okay so there's quite a lot of components which i guess makes sense because it's an airship at the end of the day it's not a um you know it's not a meal it's a, a whole big machine okay so that's it So that's the patch 2.35 notes. I've tried my best to explain everything I can from them. This is just a sub patch, you know, it's in between patches 2.3 and 2.4. They will also be adding in a patch 2.38, which they said will be the patch for adding in personal housing to the game. So I will cover that. So anyway, thank you for watching. And if you have any comments or feedback regarding things you would like to do in patch 2.35 or if I've if there's something that I could have explained better or anything like that or you know just what your feelings are of this patch then just please let me know so anyway thank you for watching and I will see you next time bye bye